Hello again, everyone, and thanks for joining us for this uh, Saturday's edition of Alaska Weather. I'm Dave Percy, a meteorologist with the National Weather Service, and I'll be hosting today's show on this 15th day of May 2021. Up first, we've got the uh, breakup map and uh, showing uh, the Koyukuk River pretty much uh, mostly open there, and then some open at the northern stretch or toward the Brooks Range. And then the uh, Buckland River, we've got uh, upper part mostly open, become some open then mostly ice in the lower uh, stretch there, about the lower half of the way. And from the Noatak River, so mostly ice, although some open there around Noatak. Of course, the North, North Slope River is Colville, uh, solid ice yet. And then Yukon River breaking up pretty nice there, open all the way up to, uh, let's see, Fort Yukon and mostly open there in the mid part of this uh, river and still uh, mostly ice there out over the delta. And so moving on to the uh, hazardous weather graphics, we've got no watches, warnings, or advisories out anywhere in the state uh, for the next couple of days. No big storms at all uh, affecting the area. And so we're hazard free for the next uh, few days probably. And satellite imagery showing fair amount of clearing there over the Bering Sea, northern Bering Sea, a lot of uh, clear, or some fairly widespread areas of clear skies. And a lot of that white there is sea ice that's uh, slowly dissolving away. Uh, but you can see the far western Bering to Kam or Kamchatka Peninsula, mostly clear skies to about Shimia. And then you pick up some clouds over the central Bering Sea around the Aleutians as well, with uh, probably some showers in there as well. But uh, Bristol Bay, Alaska Peninsula, seeing some sunshine, mostly cloudy uh, southern part of Alaska, especially south of the Alaska Range into Bristol Bay, Cusclum Valley into the interior, a uh, fair amount of sunshine today. Uh, temperatures rising in the mid to upper 60s, and that's starting to trigger some shower activity, a little bit buildup of the clouds there. And the front, uh, having moved through the panhandles, we had some rain that's uh, becoming more showery this afternoon and some cloudy skies with some scattered showers along the North Gulf Coast, but nothing too terribly heavy. And rolling this uh, through again, you can see the low pressure area there over the uh, Eastern Aleutians on that frame. Anyway, it shows up better here on the surface map, so we'll just jump to today's chart showing uh, weak low pressure there just north of Unalaska Island. About the 999 millibars, uh, wind's not much of a factor with that, kind of brisk out of the northwest a little bit there. Maybe for Atka Island, uh, but nothing uh, more than maybe small craft advisors, if that. And winds are going to stay light out there with high pressure over the far western Bering Sea for the next couple of days, uh, at least through tomorrow. And we have a front that moved through the uh, panhandle today, brought some rain, gusty winds uh, Lynn Canal, or for Lynn Canal, Haines to Skagway, uh, seeing gusts 30, 35 miles an hour out of the south today. Cape Spencer had uh, peak wind gusts, I believe about 35 miles an hour. And that's it for the uh, wind. Rainfall, not all that impressive. Let's see, Yakutat picked up about a third of an inch of precipitation, Juno two tenths of an inch. That's in the 12 hour period, in 12 hour period ending at 3 p.m. this afternoon. Ketchikan had about a tenth of an inch, Huna about a quarter of an inch, so that's about it there. Tenth of an inch fell at Cordova, and uh, also at Port Graham there, Kenai Peninsula, just a hundredth of an inch or two hundredths of an inch at Seward, and with uh, shower activities, a couple of weak troughs there. And up in the interior, some showers around Fairbanks here uh, within the last hour or two. That brought one one hundredth of an inch of precipitation, but not before the temperature reached 66 degrees. Uh, that was a warm spot in the state at mid-afternoon, was at Fairbanks, uh, other areas up in the interior into the lower to mid-60s, and then uh, temperatures pushing the lower 30s uh, along the Beaufort Sea coast, but seeing some light snow shower conditions there, Point Lake picking about a hundredth of an inch water equivalent, as did Barter Island, Kaktovik. Otherwise, out over the Bering Sea, a lot of clouds, also a fair amount of clearing, as I mentioned, over the uh, northern and eastern Bering, and some part of the Aleutians. I'll continue into tonight. A uh, few showers possible for the Pribilos, very weak trough dropping southward in that weak northerly flow on the eastern edge of uh, ridge of high pressure, one center over the western Aleutians, the other one over the Russian Far East. Look for areas of low clouds, fog, and maybe some flurries for the uh, north slope, especially the eastern Arctic coast. Mostly cloudy or variably cloudy with scattered showers over the interior, tending to uh, diminish over the central interior, but lingering along the north Gulf Coast, showery and cloudy, but showers tending to diminish there for the panhandle. 
Alaska Peninsula, risk of some showers, dry mostly for Kodiak Island, and for tomorrow, uh, high pressure controlling the Bering Sea and definitely the Aleutian Chain there, light winds and could see a fair amount of sunshine there from Shimian Atu all the way to the Alaska Peninsula. Uh, probably be a little more in the way of lower clouds, maybe some fog out there over the Aleutians and Bering than what's depicted here, but still winds will be light and uh, conditions dry, precipitation free. Uh, look for some showers and possible isolated to widely scattered afternoon thunderstorms. Any one of the showers could develop into an isolated thunderstorm or two over the interior areas. Showery for the Panhandle, but not too bad. Still a chance of light snow and fog for the Arctic coast and the north slope <clears throat> for tomorrow. But winds light everywhere around the state. Uh, no, no strong winds at all. And that's going to make for pretty smooth flying, uh, lack of turbulence, uh, smooth flying, even smaller aircraft. And for Monday, high pressure is still dominating the Bering Sea and the Aleutians with uh, dry conditions, light winds, maybe low clouds and fog, and that's about it. Still a chance of uh, fog, flurries, Arctic coast, north slope, uh, showers, brooks range, eastern interior. Chance of showers, scattered isolated thunderstorms uh, in the afternoon for the uh, mountainous terrain there north of Fairbanks. Chance of showers, not too big of a chance, though, widely scattered eastern North Gulf Coast. Still a chance of showers for the Panhandle, but improving conditions here, uh, Cook Inlet, Kenai Peninsula. <clears throat> chance of showers along the Alaska Range. Looking at the lows for tonight in the lower 40s for the Panhandle. Upper 30s to lower to mid 40s, southern Alaska. Mid to upper 30s for Bristol Bay, lower 40s to Cuscombe Valley. Lower 30s for the uh, Copper River Basin near 40 or a little below for the Susitna Valley and uh, lower to mid 40s for the eastern interior and then 30s lower to 30s around Nome and then mid to upper 20s for the uh, Bering Strait to the St. Lawrence Island area and right around 20 degrees or so for the North Slope and the Arctic Coast tonight and mid to upper 30s for the Bering Sea and the Aleutians to near 40 for the Alaska Peninsula. Highs for tomorrow uh, 55 to 62 for the uh, Cuscombe Valley Lower to mid 50s, Bristol Bay, same thing South Central Alaska, maybe mid to upper 50s for the Susitna Valley, mid 50s, Copper River Basin, upper 40s, Kodiak Island, upper 40s, lower 50s for the Panhandle, 55 to 63 for the Central Interior and uh, Arctic Coast, upper 20s to lower 30s, same for the North Slope, although maybe a little warmer over the North Slope near freezing St. Lawrence Island, lower to mid 40s for the uh, Bering Sea and the Aleutians, upper 40s for the Alaska Peninsula. Lows the following morning, 30s to lower 40s over southern Alaska and mid to upper 30s for the central interior, 20s from the Brooks Range to the Arctic coast and 30s for the Bering Sea. Highs 55 to 63 for the southern part of the state and it's only upper 20s in the Arctic coast. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. First line weather graphic, Sunday morning, IFR North Slope, Arctic coast, uh, into the Chukchi Sea there near uh, Point Hope and through the uh, Bering Strait, St. Lawrence Island uh, to the Pribilofs and Kamchitka, Kiska and Adak look uh, IFR, marginal VFR, Atka to the Alaska Peninsula. Pacific side though of the peninsula, VFR into Bristol Bay, some uh, marginal VFR, Shelikov Strait, the Aleutian Range into uh, Iliamna area. And also up in the Susitna Valley, areas of the Alaska Range, narrow bend of IFR uh, near Kane's Head or Kane's Entrance, uh, Resurrection Bay, say southern areas toward the uh, ocean. Montague Island, North Gulf Coast to about Elfin Cove. Uh, not too bad for the Panhandle, VFR, mostly VFR in the interior. And then for the uh, Sunday afternoon time frame, maybe some thunderstorms uh, scattered through the interior areas uh, from the Wrangell Mountains. Uh, to the White Mountains there, and maybe down to the lower Yukon River Valley, otherwise VFR in the interior, some lingering marginal conditions there, Western Alaska Range, Prince William Sound, uh, Kenai Peninsula a little bit, Kodiak Island, also the eastern North Gulf Coast, and right along the coastline there on the north coast, in, inside waters though, pretty good, VFR, IFR, Yukon Delta Coast, Nunavak Island, St. Lawrence Island, Pribilofs, marginal VFR, ADAC to uh, Atu, or Shimia, I mean, and VFR for Atka, Unmak, and Unalaska Islands. <clears throat> Monday morning, IFR back uh, entrenched over the North Slope Arctic coast into the Brooks Range, marginal VFR, into the Koyukuk Valley down across the Yukon River, and almost down to, say, roughly Fairbanks, and along the north, <clears throat> north side of the uh, eastern Alaska Range. IFR, 
much of the uh, northern Bering Sea and across the Yukon, Kuskokwim Delta down to Cape Nuanam, and uh, Bering Sea side of the peninsula, Pribilofs IFR, Western Aleutians, but VFR, Atka to Nikolski and Kodiak Island. And for the afternoon, a uh, broken up area of IFR out over the Bering Sea, uh, north of the central Aleutians, marginal VFR for the uh, north shores of Unmak and Unalaska Islands, Shimmy and Atu VFR or IFR, IFR also for Bristol Bay. Interior, not too bad. Some marginal VFR, central Alaska range, give or take there. Uh, south of Delta, though, maybe Isabel Pass. VFR, southern Alaska, Panhandle, North Gulf Coast. Kodiak Island, VFR, marginal VFR, out along the coast, Shelikoff Strait, and IFR for the North Slope and Arctic Coast. Passes Anatuvik, VF, marginal VFR, at times tomorrow for both passes uh, may show a trend from uh, improving in the afternoon, but it'll be kind of uh, right on the edge there of either way throughout the day. Lake Clark and Merrill, same thing, uh, marginal VFR at times for both passes, same thing for rainy, occasionally marginal. Windy, possible marginal VFR, otherwise VFR. Isabel though, VFR, Mentasta VFR. Then back to some possible marginal conditions for Tanita. Portage, mostly marginal VFR throughout the day. And for Chilkoot and White, marginal VFR. Freezing levels, about 4,000 feet in the interior, 2,000 feet near the Brooks Range, and then a little lower than that out toward the Arctic coast, Four to 6,000 feet, or roughly about 4,000 for the Panhandle, 2,000 feet southern Bering Sea and the Aleutians. Icing, not a lot, uh, just some areas there of uh, very isolated, moderate <laughs> rime icing or mixed icing. Panhandle up into the uh, southeast interior, western Alaska range, maybe the Kuskokwim Valley, and possibly as far north as the Koyukuk Valley, but nothing really significant. Uh, looking at the jet stream, uh, high pressure there right along the Yukon Delta coast. So northerly is uh, not too strong at this elevation. You can see the stronger jet just barely trying to push up to the eastern Aleutians, not quite making it. 70 knots from the southwest over the Panhandle. Otherwise, pretty light winds, northerly 65 to 75 in the central Bering Sea. And 9,000 feet, real light wind pattern here, 25 knots there, but that's south of the Panhandle. Maybe northerly is at 20 knots, possibly, Cape Lisbon Point Hope. Otherwise, high pressure, light winds, southern Bering Sea, the Aleutians, all of the interior areas. And at 3,000 feet, light wind pattern here also, uh, 20 knots, possibly there along the northwest Arctic coast, Kivalina area. High pressure, light winds, Bering Sea and the Aleutians. And uh, moving on to turbulence, uh, well, with the light wind pattern, uh, no big storms around. We're not really expecting any significant turbulence there from the Arctic coast to the Gulf of Alaska, Aleutians, Bering Sea, even the Panhandle, looking uh, pretty good for the day tomorrow. And after the break, I'll be back with a look at the marine forecast and other interesting information. Dual polarization technology is a major upgrade to the current radar system. It allows forecasters a better idea of what's actually out there and can help keep you safe. Current radar technology uh, transmits and receives information in the horizontal direction, which is very limited. Dual polarization technology, in addition to the horizontal, transmits and receives uh, vertical energy, which allows forecasters to get information about the size, shape, and phase of the precipitation. We can use that information to better determine the precipitation type to expect at your given location. There you have it. This new technology is currently being installed in radars across the country and is already being used by National Weather Service forecasters to produce better, more accurate forecasts. Learn more here and follow us. Want to know about the future of weather radar? Well, the National Severe Storms Lab has it here with its new phased array radar. Let's check it out. It's a non-moving radar. It has four faces of the antenna, each pointing in different directions. One of the big advantages is that we're seeing so far, it can sample the, the area around the radar in less than a minute, maybe even a half a minute. And this is five, six times faster than what they can do today. 
NSSL is leading the development of future weather radar with this project. Learn more here and follow us. The Storm Prediction Center is one of the NOAA weather partners. They are located in the National Weather Center in Norman, Oklahoma. Greg Carbon gives us a glimpse into what the SBC does. Our mission is to analyze and forecast severe thunderstorms and the potential for tornadoes, large hail, and damaging winds from those thunderstorms across the lower 48 states, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. One of the primary missions of the Storm Prediction Center is the issuance of severe thunderstorm and tornado watches across the country when conditions appear to be coming together to support the development of severe thunderstorms and tornadoes. The world-class meteorologists in the Storm Prediction Center specialize in severe weather and keeping you safe. Learn more here and follow us. The National Severe Storms Lab is working on increasing the lead time for severe weather warnings. The national average for tornado warnings is currently 13 minutes, but more notice would be helpful, especially for those in charge of moving large groups to shelter. Warn on Forecast will help forecasters issue hazardous weather warnings earlier. The project will give them more info about the chances of strong winds, large hail, and even tornadoes. Currently, warnings are created by forecasters looking at the atmosphere outside, understanding its volatility, and then comparing that to how they see the Doppler radar presenting what's going on inside the thunderstorms. One on forecast is an idea where we're going to take the massive amounts of satellite, radar, and surface data and stick them all into a very high resolution prediction model. And then by producing new forecasts every 15 or 20 minutes, the forecasters hopefully will be able to use that model to produce warnings that extend out to an hour. Before the National Weather Service can use this tool, it must be developed and tested. One big challenge will be deciding how to get the model predictions to the forecasters. I'm going to keep this one very low, I'm just adjusting the track. These hazardous weather prediction models are going to produce a huge amount of output. And this fire hose of data is just too much for forecasters to handle in real time quickly. So in order to help deal with that, uh, NSSL has developed a related project called FACETS. And FACETS is the methodology which will enable forecasters to focus very quickly on the most important threats. Once worn on forecast and FACETS are proven to be reliable and effective, then forecasters will be better able to inform you of threats nearby. Learn more here and follow us. The hazardous weather test bed is located at the National Weather Center in Norman, Oklahoma. It is used for experiments that will allow forecasters to learn and apply new technologies. The hazardous weather test bed is a really unique space throughout all of NOAA. And this is where the researchers and the operational folks come together in a common space to solve operational problems and to test new research tools that the research community is working on. The goal is to accelerate the transfer from research to operations of the newest tools and techniques. People come from around the world to collaborate on this unique project. We can bring together not only NOAA people, but also university people, faculty, uh, researchers, uh, private sector meteorologists, folks working in other countries in meteorology, forecasters can all come together and focus on what the problem of the day is with the forecasters. Each spring, several experiments occur in the hazardous weather test bed. Learn more here and follow us.
What are you looking at? And what are you ignoring? Did you notice the NOAA logo in the corner? Forecasters have a lot of information in front of them too. Every second counts during severe weather and decisions about where to focus are constantly being made. This could be even more challenging in the future. Phased array radar will produce four to six times more information than what we have now, which brings us to the question researchers are hoping to answer. Will more radar information affect forecasters' decisions? From our past experiments, we've learned a lot about how forecasters think uh, during the warning decision process, but we've also learned that those thought processes are very complex, and for that reason, we need a better way to be able to track forecasters' cognitive activity. Inbounds and possibly golf ball sized tails. And eye tracker is a piece of technology that is used to determine in real time where someone's eye gaze is located. And these eye trackers are typically video based, which means a camera sits below a computer monitor and with infrared light and vector analysis, we can determine where a person is looking and how their eyes are moving. Eye tracking is already being used in the medical field and air traffic control. Using similar research methods, NSSL is discovering the benefit for weather forecasting too. Phased array radar will give forecasters a lot more to think about. Understanding their decision-making process will help researchers develop even more user-friendly tools. So what's the benefit for you? Even better weather warnings. To learn more, check us out online and follow us on Facebook and Twitter. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Today's sea ice analysis continuing to uh, do a slow dissolve out there over the northern Bering Sea along the southwest coast near St. Lawrence Island and to a lesser extent Norton Sound there through the Bering Strait and up along the western Arctic coast. But that uh, melting trend will continue for the next uh, week or through the summer actually. Moving on to the coastal water forecasts uh, for the southeast coast tomorrow. Lynn Canal, south winds 20 knots with four foot seas, otherwise uh, Stevens Passage south at 15, three foot seas, even lighter winds for Clarence Strait out of the northwest at 10, seas pretty slight, and westerly winds 10 to 15 knots along the outer coastline with seas of around six feet. Looking at Monday, Lynn Canal, south 15, otherwise variable 10 for the inside water, central and southern areas, and uh, Variable winds 10 knots for the outer coastline as well, kind of an east-northeast direction there on the south coast to north-northwest on the north coast, but only 10 knots, sea 6 to 7 feet. And for Prince William Sound, east winds at 15 knots tomorrow. Cook Inlet, southerlies 10 to 15 knots, 2 to 3 foot seas. West winds at 15 for Kamishak Bay. Barren Islands, uh, southwest 15. And for the north Gulf Coast, south to southwest, 10 knots, seas 5 to 6 feet. Outlook for Monday, Cook Inlet south to southwest at 10, uh, Kamishak Bay west 15, southwest 15 for the Barren Islands, back to west 15 for the western North Gulf Coast. Around Middleton Island, very light winds for Monday south at 10, seas maybe 5 feet. And Prince William Sound, light southwest breeze, 10 knots, seas 2 feet. And uh, Shelikoff Strait, southwest winds at 20 knots with 4 foot seas, otherwise uh, Kodiak Island looking pretty good, variable to north 10 knots see seven feet or less and uh, Alaska Peninsula northerly 15 knots and Bristol Bay light west winds at 10 knots with three foot seas Monday Bristol Bay west to 20 sees four feet so a little bit more of a breeze there but the Alaska Peninsula wind staying light west northwest at 15 and Sitkanak to Castle Cape northwest at about 15 southwest 15 Shelikoff Strait east side of Kodiak west winds 15 knots on Alaska Island, north to northwest, 15 to 20 knots, seas 5 to 9 feet. Unmak Island, northwest at 15, with 5 to 8 foot seas. Adak and Atka, light northeast breeze, 10 knots, 4 to 6 foot seas. Amchitka, northeast at 15, and for Kiska Shimianatu, east winds, 15 knots, seas 5 feet. And for Monday, east 20 for the uh, far western Aleutians, Kiska to Shimia. Amchitka Island, small craft advisories, east to 25, seas just under 10 feet. 20 to 25 knot winds out of the east for Adak and Atka with 4 to 9 foot seas. Unamak Island, uh, east 20 to 25 knots, 4 to 6 foot seas. On Alaska Island, east northeast, 15 to 20 knots, seas 3 to 5 feet. For the southwest coast, uh, St. Lawrence Island, Yukon Delta Coast, uh, north at 20, northwest 15, Cuscombe Delta Coast and the Pribilofs, north 15, St. Matthew Island and Norton Sound. 
And then for Monday, light winds for St. Lawrence Island, northwest at 10, and 20 knot winds out of the northwest for the uh, southwest coast there, south of Nunavik Island. North winds at 10 for St. Matthew, St. Paul, and St. George Island. So pretty light winds and north or west northwest, 10 to at 10 knots for St. Lawrence Island and Norton Sound. Eastern Boulevard Sea Coast uh, tomorrow. East northeast at 15, northeast 15 for the central coast, west side north at 15, all the way down to Cape Bo or Cape Thompson, Cape Thompson to Wales, north at 20. Outlook for Monday, uh, Wales to Cape Thompson, north at 15, Cape Thompson to Cape Beaufort, north at 10. The northeast winds 15 knots, western Arctic coast for the central coast, east to 20, and uh, the eastern Boulevard Sea Coast, east winds 20 knots, and uh, sea. Sea, well, ice-covered seas, so no seas. <laughs> and for tonight, uh, look for areas of low clouds, fog, maybe some flurries, but nothing significant up there. Kind of a weak trough uh, on the east side of the Arctic coast. There may be some showers scattered around the central eastern interior. Chance of showers, mostly cloudy skies. For the North Gulf Coast, Prince William Sound, Kenai Peninsula, western Alaska Range, and showery uh, for the Panhandle, nothing heavy with the front weakening and pushing eastward. Showers also for the Alaska Peninsula for tomorrow. Uh, showers, uh, central and eastern interior, southeast interior, Copper River Basin, maybe some scattered thunderstorms developing, mostly cloudy and showery for the Panhandle and the North Gulf Coast as well. Not too bad, Kodiak Island, mostly cloudy. Nice over the Bering Sea with some clearing and the Aleutians with high pressure. And the outlook for Monday, uh, same pattern, showers, thunderstorms possible, scattered over the eastern interior, chance of light snow or flurries up north, otherwise becoming sunnier for south central Alaska. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating.